welcome or welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be my november wrap up as you can probably hear i'm sick getting over a gross bug so i've got my throat coat tea here overall this month i read 11 books but four of those were for nonfiction november so those were already in a separate video i will link it above but I'm just going to be talking about the non nonfiction books I read this month for November. So unorganized. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So the first book I completed this month is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This is a fairy tale retelling, and actually, I think to tell you what it's a fairy tale retelling of would be a spoiler. So this is just a fairy tale retelling. It's YA. And to me, it's very much fantasy. It was unlike anything I've read. And I gave this five stars. And I was super surprised by that. I kind of picked this up on a whim just because I love the cover. And I saw it at Barnes & Noble. So I wasn't expecting for this to be so good. Like, I couldn't put this down. The parts about this that I loved is, is that it's a sister story. It's about three sisters. And it the main character is the youngest sister and I'm also the youngest of three sisters so I could relate. The the main character her name is Iris and then she has two sisters Vivi and Gray. Vivi and Gray. And when they were kids they experienced a traumatic event that none of them can remember or so it seems where they were separated from their parents for a month. Um, it appeared that they were kidnapped and then they reappeared in the spot they disappeared a month later. So there is a lot going on in this story and it it like shocked me in some ways and it was just always it was moving really fast and it was always taking place in like new settings. And the thing that I thought was special about this was how the magic just kind of like spills off the page. Every thing that they do, like you're made to believe that like they're very different. They're not like any other kids and they're kind of like outcasts. And everything that they do, you can kind of see why that's why that's the case. So I don't know. I just think if you're into sister stories, YA, magic, and very fair this is very fairy tale, but it's like but it's happening like in modern day. Um I was expecting this to feel more like an like a classic fairy tale but it was it was still really interesting doorways to nowhere and really good characters and twists and turns that'll keep you guessing I was really surprised by so much that happened in this and I, and I stayed up really late to finish it I haven't read anything like this and so I think it's unique if you haven't read this I know it came out in like a couple years ago so you, so I know it's been popular, but if you haven't yet and something's making you hesitate, definitely, I highly recommend this one. Next, I read A Romance, Part of a World by Abby Jimenez. I did include this in a reading vlog, so I'll link that above and I'll keep my thoughts short. But I did give this four stars just because it's a really sweet romance and it has had mostly everything I was looking for, um, especially like the yearning and the setting were really cozy in this it had it did have a lot of um heavier storylines like it it had some emotional abuse in the main character's past that she 
wasn't actively going through on the page but she was kind of processing through it so to me I didn't those parts just felt kind of like a slog I wanted something a little bit lighter but the 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 two the, the couple in here is really sweet there's some there's a lot of animals in here that I loved and there's like a really romantic charming bed and breakfast small town and um, a main character who really finds her voice and changes her life and I just if you're into romance this is a good one to pick up I know it was in the good did read choice awards as a finalist I do think it's worth reading and it's a it's been hyped for a reason so if you if you're into romance um and there is an age gap the woman is older than the hero in this so pick it up if that sounds good to you okay next I read half of this book it was a DNF uh something wilder I chatted all about why I did not finish this in the reading vlog so check that out but I think the main reason is that I was definitely in a romance mood and this book started to turn into like a wild western treasure hunt with not enough romance and I just was halfway and I just wasn't loving it enough or the characters enough to to finish you know I've loved all of other of Christina Lauren's other books mostly like a few of them I haven't read yet but like a few of them I loved and gave five stars like the soulmate equation and love in other words um and Josh and Hazel's Half Night Stand. I think I really liked those ones. So, but this one just wasn't for me. Maybe I, I still will pick up their next book. Just wasn't into this one. Next, I read Anon Please by Dumois, which is a anonymous Instagram account. And this is a telling about how that account got started and some like behind the scenes things this is of course supposed to be a work of fiction and anything um related to real life is just a coincidence they, they say but you can definitely see if you follow the account and you're interested definitely see where some of the stories in here maybe originated and I thought that was a fun twist so I talk a lot about this in the reading vlog that I link above so check that out if you want to read this but I do think this is like something that most people will like. It's very Devil Wears Prada if you're into pop culture, if you're into romance, women's fiction, or just like, I don't know, the fashion industry. Like if you liked The Hills, <laughs> or when Lauren was an intern at that one place and was always getting yelled at, well, read this. <laughs> I've already recommended this enough. I think I gave this three stars just because it wasn't, it's not my favorite book I've ever read and I didn't hate it and I didn't, love it but I did really enjoy this so good one to get you through I think a reading slump and I think that would make a good gift for someone in your life if they are a fan of the Instagram account like maybe that would be a good Christmas gift to pick up next I also talked about this in my reading vlog so I'll keep it really short The Lesbianist Guide to Catholic School by Senora Reyes this one was really cute sweet very YA great couples great representation found family it has so much going on for it it was it's one of my favorite YAs I've read I mean I typically love like every YA I read just because when I'm in a YA mood I'm in a YA mood and it follows Yami and she is going through a lot in her life and in her family's life and I loved her as a character I loved her brother Cesar as a character I loved every character in this book so um, definitely check the content warnings because it has a lot of heavier content, I would say. Um, but at the same time, it's also a cozy read because of the family in it and the and the friend group. So, and I did give it four stars. Next, I haven't talked about this book yet um, in any of my videos, but I did read Last Night at the Telegraph Hotel by Melinda Lowe. This is a historical fiction but it's also YA because it follows a teenager. The main character her name is Lily and she is growing up in 1950s San Francisco and this is about the 1950s LGBTQ scene in San Francisco and what that looked like and the Telegraph Club was a gay club that I think was semi-secret. I think that in this time period there was a history of gay clubs being raided by police. So it has some really 
heavier topics being about um, being closeted and the community what they went through back then I think this is a really beautiful book though like it it makes this time period come alive it felt like we were there with them you feel for them you really feel for Lily and what she's going through but it also has some lovely relationships and beautiful friendships and characters to root for oh, I mean this book was definitely heartbreaking like it like you really feel for the characters and everything that they're going through and they go through some really tough shit in this oh yeah I honestly I don't want to give anything away because it's so beautiful but I think it has a beautiful portrayal of a gay teenager who is also Chinese American trying to make sense of her of where she belongs in the world and doesn't ever really feel fully accepted because people look at her differently and I, I just think how her experience is described and how she goes about the world is just was a really refreshing perspective to read from and I loved I just love this book it was beautiful and um, I I listened to part audiobook and part ebook I didn't love the audiobook narration, but I've heard worse. It's one that like you just want, you have to get through and you want to know what happens. So an audiobook's probably the quickest way. So overall, it has some really sweet moments, but it also has some like really heartbreaking things happen and it's such high it's such high stakes because you know people were getting arrested for being gay at this time. So if you were caught at a gay club, then you know your whole life could be ruined and I'm just really glad I read this book and um, I recommend it if you're considering picking this up because it does feel more historical, beautiful writing, and I recommend it. Okay, and the last book I completed this month is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion and I loved it. I think I gave this four and a half stars. Yeah, four and a half feels good. I think I gave uh, Legend Born five stars. I think this one's more four and a half for me. So this is the second book in the Legend Born series. It's about Brie and I don't want to give any spoilers but the the first book is about a secret society like basically a secret magical society that are ancestors of King Arthur and his round table and what that means to share a bloodline with Arthur and there's like their their whole they have their own like class system and structure and all kinds of things that you're introduced to in the first book in the second book it's much more pro political and it's like kind of like convoluted political so that was my my only thing about the second book is that there's so much happening and sometimes you're like, what, did I miss something? Like, who are these people? There's just so many people. But you know what? I, I, she, I, I don't think Tracy has said like how many books this is going to be. So who knows? She could be setting up a seven book series and she's got to do this. Um, I don't think that took away from the book as a whole. It just made it so that as you're reading, you really need to like pay more attention of like, okay, who's who, what's going on. The characters are super great in this. I know that these books have a lot of amazing lessons of, and themes of racism and how generational trauma still impacts people today and I don't know I just feel like I, I learn a lot reading these books and I always feel like it's like a really um, important YA book to read and Brie is an amazing character and she would do stuff that I would be like why is she doing that that's so annoying and then I'd realize <laughs> She's doing that because she's 17 and she's ex experienced all this trauma in her life and, and all the women before her have too. And you can't really, you really start to empathize with, with all the women who have come before her and the sacrifices they have to make. And I don't know, this is just really beautiful. And if you're into fantasy at all, like I feel like you would like this and um, I annotated it. This was one of my most anticipated of the year and it did not let me down. And now I'm just hoping that she'll announce more books for sure. The ending of this, ugh, I was surprised by. And so there's gotta be a, there's gotta be a third book, come on. Um, but yeah, that's what I get for being caught up with the series. Now I have to wait a long time. I waited over a year for this one. Um, and then now 
depending on when she announces a new one. We'll see when that comes out. Like, I, I'm still thinking about this book, and I love that. Like, books that I'm still thinking about. Like, I tend to, when I'm, when I'm done, I usually have, like, a gut reaction rating, and then after a few days or, like, a week, I'm like, okay, I'm still thinking about that book. That means it needs to be a higher rating, and that's how I felt about this one. So, I'm really glad I, I got through this, um, and had a lot of fun reading it and I did get through half of it in my reading vlog so yeah keep saying watch my reading vlog okay that is what I read this month it has been like two week, two weeks since I finished anything so I really need to get on that it's already a couple days into December um I have 11 books I need to finish before the end of the year if I want to hit my 100 book reading goal so wish me luck. I think I can do it. I have a lot of like shorter audiobooks and some like quick read books that I'm looking forward to finishing before the end of the year. I think a lot of like Christmas romance because I'm feeling in that mood. So we shall see. I hope that everyone's having a good reading month so far and um, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave a star emoji. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.